Welcome to Uncage, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Rami Al-Haddad. Rami, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you, Vance. It's my pleasure to be here. So Rami, we will be talking about aviation and digital transformation today. Rami is the Group Chief Information Officer for the National Aviation Services, the NAS. The NAS is a, a fast growing aviation services provider in the emerging markets and, and really across Africa. The company was start, started in 2003 and they've grown rapidly. Uh, now delivering services and solutions through over 55 airports across the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. We'll talk about some of the things that they're working on and how they're expanding, but mostly we'll be talking about how they're actually applying digital technology and digital transformation to move the business forward in a rapid way. So Rami, I'm excited to go through that, but before we get there, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Um, certainly. So um, I started my career uh, some 20 years ago uh, in the telecommunication sector, and I started in software engineering and uh, hence applying a lot of logic and knowing no boundaries to what we can do with software. And then I moved in from uh, the technical work into IT project management and developing actual products and, and, and taking something from requirements all the way to a product uh, fit for market. Um, and then I moved into IT infrastructure and building big data centers. Um, and finally, I landed at NAS. Throughout my career, I worked in um, the UK, Australia, uh, and now in Kuwait, uh, and also across different industry, so from um, telecommunications to security, uh, a little bit of real estate, uh, logistics, and now in aviation. Excellent. Well, I mean, the NAS story is pretty incredible, what you guys are doing. Tell us a little bit about what you're working on. Oh, absolutely. Oh, we're working on so many things. So, <laughs> so like, like you mentioned, we started in 2003 as a ground handler in one airport. And then we expanded rapidly into other areas of the business from passenger handling to ramp handling to VIP services, lounges, meet and assist, um, fixed based operation, and then across to um, aviation security, aviation training, uh, technology, cargo. We also expanded geographically from being in Kuwait um, into other countries in the Middle East, into India, and then in Africa. Today, we're at more than 50 international airports across more than 30 countries, and we're continuing our expansion. So Rami, I mean, one of the amazing things I think that you and I have spoken a little bit about is how you're really be, being able to apply digital transformation to push the aviation industry forward. Tell us a little bit about the digital work that you guys are doing. Certainly. I'm, I'm very uh, proud and grateful to be working with a great leadership team who really believe in technology. So in NAS. Uh, probably unlike many other uh, companies in our industry, actually the, the IT uh, department is represented by me at that very top table. Um, I take part in shaping the uh, company's future. So basically, um, we, we, we rely on technology not only on keeping our heartbeat, but in accelerating our growth and getting us to reach geographies that otherwise it would take us longer to reach. Uh, we use technology in overcoming physical boundaries because there are certain things that might limit you in terms of physical space. Mm -hmm. But with technology, you can actually, you know, go virtual. You can expand that space. You can be working from home, like we've seen. Um, you can be independent from limitations related to availability of local infrastructure, especially in challenging markets like. Right. Uh, Africa, Middle East, and, and other areas that are still um, in the developing countries and might not have great reliable uh, infrastructure, we rely on technology to be able to overcome these challenges and be able to extend the great services to our customers over in these regions. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I like that at really applying digital technologies to essentially leapfrog probably some of the infrastructure problems that that you could come across. But let's talk a little bit about the aviation industry and really kind of the areas that you're working on. You know, the last couple of years have been kind of tricky, but uh, tell me a little bit more about what we're seeing in the aviation space in general, especially in the, the technology area. Certainly. So, so when it comes to technology, I usually categorize any projects we do into four main categories or sometimes overlaps. Mm -hmm. So when, whenever we're doing IT projects or IT work, it's either to serve business growth, mm -hmm. cost reduction, improve reliability or doing compliance. Mm -hmm. So if the company, if, if you look, if you take a snapshot at any given time about the IT uh, projects and IT function in a company and you find it all relating to compliance, that actually is a bad signal. It means the company is always doing catch up. It's not really leveraging technology to grow or improve efficiencies or yeah. innovate or, or look at uh, new things. So within NAS, what we have done uh, very early on, I mean, now it's been, it, it's a vision that we've looked at in, in, you know, 10 years ago, and we've managed to implement uh, about three or four years ago, what we have done, we've looked at ICT uh, department or an IT department within NAS that used to be, better. and everyone viewed it as an overhead, you know, that, that the first thing people think about when they see someone from IT is, oh, budgets, another cost. Yeah. So if we want to save money, that's what we do. We just go to IT and say, reduce your budget. However, what we decided to do is to take IT from being a cost center into being a profit center. And to do that, we had to go through a complete culture shift. So we basically had to work with all the stakeholders. People working in IT within NAS had to learn aviation. They actually had to go on the ramp and understand how what they do relate to aviation and how we can use technology to improve the processes. What can we do with technology in terms of improving what we do on the ramp or even doing more stuff on the ramp and at the airport in general? Yeah. We also had to work with the aviation guys to illustrate to them and, and showcase to them the latest technologies and what can we do with technologies, yeah. understand their challenges and really have them open up to try new things, you know, uh, take a little bit of risk. And, uh, what we did, we've, we've taken a lot of uh, our custom developed applications and we decided to make them commercially available. And in doing that, we really had to survey the market and look at best practices, look at global requirements and where they're holding and build a roadmap. And just to give you an example, today under the umbrella of NAS, we actually have a full fledged uh, ICT company registered separately, specialized wow in delivering aviation technologies. And this company today, it actually has its own uh, customer base uh, that extend beyond Middle East and Africa. We have customers in, in the Americas. Uh, we have customers in, in Asia, in Europe that are actually using software and IT services out of ICT.aero, which is an NAS fully owned company. We yeah. also penetrated the e-commerce space. So today, uh, NAS owns one of the biggest e-commerce platforms for VIP services across airports. Uh, the name is Fast Track with Aero. This platform specializes in providing um, uh, VIP uh, passenger services, uh, such as meet and assist, meet and greet, lounges, uh, luggage delivery, uh, across more than 250 airports globally, and it integrates directly with airlines. So, so that, that shift, on just being a support department, providing you with a laptop and fixing your Wi-Fi and printer into a force that is actually driving business towards offering new services, towards bringing new revenue streams, towards uh, basically creating di diversification in your investment has definitely enabled NAS to penetrate new markets and introduce the new technologies. And, 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 and it became part of NAS uh, image as being a, a leader in, in its sector. Yeah, Remy, first of all, kudos to you guys. I mean, that's an incredible story. 
And certainly whenever you're able to shift uh, an operational unit that's not making money into something that actually uh, starts to actually drive some of the innovation and, and the growth for the business, it's, it's quite exciting. I love the idea that you're building almost like this interface of tools and technologies that could be applied and utilized by other individuals, other airports, other air related groups as they as they try to build out their own capabilities in their market. And so it's a it's quite a powerful story. But let me shift gears a little bit and talk about how that story may have been impacted by the last couple of years in the pandemic. I mean, tell us a little bit about how you and and the team have fared, perhaps the challenges that you faced over the last couple of years, and maybe some of the exciting opportunities that have appeared on the market. Uh, Certainly. I think um, just like every aviation company around the world, we were very badly impacted by all the closures uh, of airports and uh, reduction in, in, in traffic and all the restrictions related to travel. However, I'm very, very proud of how we navigated our way through the pandemic and emerged much stronger. Not only that, we've done things that have changed thousands of people's lives during this pandemic. So early in the pandemic, uh, we we immediately looked at our IT uh, section, you know, and and, and that's again um, a testament to how IT now is viewed within NAS. So immediately we've, we've met with all the ICT guys and we were thinking, how can we reopen the airports? What can we do from the technology side to allow the airport to reopen and restore travel. And that was very early in 2020, just Mm -hmm. after the closure of airports. And as soon as uh, different countries started putting restrictions or procedures to enable travel. So what we did, we met with the authorities and we innovated a mobile app. The goal of which was to achieve three things, enable uh, passengers to travel safely and ensuring the safety of passengers and staff at the airport. And we do that by Um, making sure that everyone getting into the airport follow the health measure, whether it's, you know, uh, getting the temperature taking, looking at their symptoms, uh, putting their tracking information. And the second thing was to be able to overcome the challenge uh, that uh, was introduced by social distancing. Immediately, once you have passengers standing two meters apart, um, your capacity at the airport goes down significantly. So we also... Uh, innovated some some sort of appointment booking um, and we we've, we've gone a lot into e-processing of of procedures um, to reduce the amount of time you need to spend at the airport and increase the capacity virtually right and the third one was to be able to help passengers comply with the ever-changing requirements of travel and that project you know started evolving as the pandemic unfolds so so basically once we get into the PCR testing, that platform became the way to book your PCR and validate that for any passenger, the PCR is valid uh, within the time frame. And then when vaccinations were uh, required, we've integrated with a national vaccination database. And basically, we don't require the passenger to present anything. We can basically um, uh, pull up their data related to vaccination, of course, with their consent, using the app and making sure that they comply with the requirement to travel. And later on, once institutional quarantine was required, that app became your one-stop shop to book your PCR, do your vaccination, book your quarantine, ensuring you're complying with all the requirements. Mm -hmm. And then it was transformed into becoming the first uh, digital passport in Kuwait. And it became mandatory for everyone traveling out in Kuwait. And then we use the same technology in Iraq. And what that did, it actually allowed uh, a lot of people to travel again. It allowed lots of families to reunite. It allowed lots of people to go back to their work. So the number of lives we've impacted by innovating a solution and working very closely with other authorities, with other airlines, integrating with them and basically digitally transforming the, the processes really showcased how we can use technology to overcome big challenges, completely unanticipated and challenges that are unfolding in in ways that we never thought of. Yeah, it's a great example of how there was a challenge, there was a necessity, the business was being impacted heavily, and the team, your team was able to handle the challenge, develop a, a new platform, 
that essentially has now become such a simple tool as far as I can, you know, listening to you talk about it. I certainly wish, Rami, that I had that for some of my airlines here here, here in the U.S. <laughs> but uh, uh, unfortunately, we still have quite a fragmented marketplace. Um, but I, that type of uh, seamless solution seems very powerful and, and probably something that will become part of an ongoing solution, I would imagine, you know, well after, well after COVID. A capability is there, so God forbid, um, you know, we go back into any sort of a similar pandemic or similar requirement. We know that the technology is there. We know we can always use it. Um, I, I certainly hope that we don't. I, I certainly hope that we go back to being able to travel uh, a lot more freely and, and in simpler ways. But we've made the investment. The technology is there. The capability is there, and people know it exists. So now. It is always demanded if we ever get into any challenging situation, we know that there is a way out. So Rami, if you look at the uh, opportunities that you you and the team have for 2022, what, what's on the docket? What are your priorities this year? Oh, certainly. I've, I've, we've, we've, th this year, we're looking at um, continuing to innovate and restore travel and introduce services that now, because of the pandemic, people know it exists and, and, and they know they can use. So just to give you some ideas uh, about some of the projects we're working on is enabling passengers to check in completely remotely. So taking the entire airport experience outside of the airport. So, you know, you, you can be at your, your, your hotel or your home or your office and you're completely done with every procedure you need to do at the airport. So basically, by the time you arrive, you're going straight into boarding, into your flight. Mm. Um, and we're bringing all that experience digitally. Uh, this definitely uh, will improve the customer experience. It will give a lot of personalization. Uh, so you do actually the things you like and, and you get to, to, to complete your duty-free shopping. You, you, you get to book the services at the time you want. So this is one of the solutions we're currently working on. Um, another uh, solution, that we're, we're also uh, looking at is basically uh, the uh, digital processing of identities. So mm -hmm. it, during the pandemic, we invested quite heavily uh, into the digital passport and the blockchain identification. Mm -hmm. And at ways of using um, these technologies to also enable seamless access for our loyalty club, uh, you know, loyalty club members. So our customers who use our services, such as lounges and meet and assist and, and, and any other services, they can now leverage that technologies to basically um, include all the reservations, uh, access certain privileges, access uh, certain features. And finally, we're also looking at um, the, you know, a mobile, uh, wireless uh, technologies to go beyond the physical boundaries of airports as we continue our expansion um, into uh, the developing market. Um, a lot of the airports we're going to there now, they are very well challenged when it comes to financial resources, uh, especially due to the aviation slowdown. And basically, with the solutions we are bringing, uh, less demand on infrastructure, um, a more cost-effective solution. It, it allows these airports to be able to pick up the pace and restore travel in, a, in an affordable, uh, yet very secure and compliant uh, ways. Well, Rami, I mean, we've been covering a lot of ground here and, and clearly uh, you guys are working on a lot of really interesting stuff. Uh, I could talk all day on each one of these areas that you're outlining. It's great to hear what you're working on. We've been speaking with Rami Al Haddad. He is the group CIO of National Aviation Services. Um, National Aviation Services is changing the aviation industry through digital transformation. They are one of the fastest growing aviation services provider worldwide. They, they are really making a big impact on emerging markets and really already the largest ground handler in Africa. Rami, if anybody wanted to learn about what you guys are working on at NAS uh, and some of these products and how you've shifted your IT group from being a cost center to a profit center, where, where can they find you? Uh, they can certainly find us at nas.aero as well as ict.aero. They will find our solutions there. They will find a description of what they do, uh, a full illustration of use cases, 
and definitely they can reach out to us at any time and we'll be very happy to take them through any information they might require. Well, I mean, thank you so much, Rami. It's, it's been a wonderful opportunity to chat with you. And I really, really think that every company dreams about trying to figure out ways to do that. But what a great case study and what a great story of how you've been able to shift really from that cost center into a profit center and really into, I, I would say, a critical part of the innovation of the company going forward. So thank you so much for sharing your story, Rami, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you very much, Vance, for giving me the opportunity to share our story. Thank you. Bye-bye.